Uh, well, let's speak now to uh, international security and border control expert uh, Henry uh, Bolton, who's uh, joining us. Henry, thank you very much uh, for your, your time. We're being told that Suella Bravo is heading to Frankfurt later to uh, discuss with other G7 leaders uh, about the way forward on this. It, it does seem in terms of tackling organised crime particularly, there has to be some kind of international effort. Indeed. Uh, I, I mean, I should say from the outset that I'm not in any way opposed to agreements with the French. Not at all. I think that's part of the, the puzzle that's got to be put together to deal with this, this problem. Um, and indeed, speaking to the European Union and speaking to our friends and allies in Europe uh, and further afield um, is absolutely nece necessary. And I'm glad to see Suala Braverman is now engaging more broadly because, uh, you know, this is, as I say, it's one part of the, the puzzle. And up until now, what we've seen from the government consistently is a reactive approach with one-off po policies. Now, those policies may be that related to uh, you know na the Navy in the Channel or, or an agreement with France, but frankly, they don't work, not on their own, not as standalone policies or, or responses. What we've got to have is a strategic framework, fully integrated, fully comprehensive across all departments of government and all agencies. And that's got to be at the international level, disrupting people smuggling networks all the way right back to the point of origin at every conceivable point along the way. That requires diplomatic engagement uh, and the, the law enforcement engagement and proactive engagement. That's crucial. This isn't about liaison. This is about using intelligence and tactical operations on the ground in coordination with our friends and allies along the route to actually go hunting these people. It was a program that we used to have in two, until 2006, until Tony Blair pulled the funding on it. Why? You'd have to ask him. But we need to have that fully integrated approach rather than what we've got at the moment, which is right. in, uh, uncoordinated and, and incoherent. If we but really need a situation where we've got a framework that creates the sum of the whole is greater than that of the parts. At the moment, what we've got is a lot of parts. But how, how much should we contribute to that in, in terms of um, the, the money? I mean, 63 million we're being told now in this deal with France. Clearly, if we're talking about pan-European uh, strategies, it's going to cost a lot more, given, of course, the, the cost of living crisis and what we might uh, uh, be finding out on Thursday. Well, obviously, I'm not, I'm not directly privy to the discussions that have been going on with the French. But uh, as somebody who's actually worked borders and worked the fight against organized crime, including Albanian organized crime in that region, I'm puzzled as to why we've got to put that money up. I, mean, I really am. Yes, we're, we're subsidizing the gendarmerie and the reservists that the gendarmerie deploy on the patrols on, on the North French coast. Yeah, there's various things. We've got to pay for the expense of putting our liaison officers in those control rooms. I have nothing against that. But, but, but this amount of 63 million, as I understand, per year, it seems a massive amount. And I believe, um, and I'd love to sit down with the Home Office and go through this, but I believe that we'd be far better off and it'd be far more effective if we use that money to actually effect that upstream disruption of organized crime and the people smuggling and used it to reform the way that we manage our borders. And just as an example of what I mean by that, We've got an incoherent approach on our maritime borders. We've got about eight agencies operating patrol boats, doing entirely different jobs on the on the, on the on the the or in the channel where they should actually be responding. One agency affecting law enforcement across the board, rather like the U.S. Coast Guard or the, the Finnish Coast Guard. Um, but we we need to reform what we do there. Border force should be a law enforcement agency in its own right, like a police force. Many people don't understand that it's yeah. not. They're actually civil servants. Yeah. No, I mean, th th just very quickly, the one problem there is because the Royal Navy has indicated it doesn't want to take on that role and it says it, it doesn't have the capability to uh, undertake that. And that's, that's correct. They're, they're right. And in fact, their deployment was a bizarre thing at the, at the time. I, I think Priti Patel was just, you know, putting something out there that looked good, good in the media um, yeah. to sort of to, to appease if you like, the, 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 the anti-immigration block. And it, it's to an extent it worked. But we've got to be realistic here. The Navy, the military have their own tasks to fulfill globally. And that's right. But we shouldn't be asking them to step into effectively a law enforcement role. Our border agents, our border force should actually be have the capability that it needs. We're leasing boats. We're hiring boats for border force. They should have their, their own fleet. Let's bring in the Coast Guard. Let's bring border force into it. Let's bring some yep. of the naval assets, perhaps. And various other assets that are out there, maritime or oh, fisheries protection, should be one agency 
policing that, that maritime border. It's a border. It's not just an immigration problem. It's dealing with heroin, cocaine trafficking in, in boats across the, 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 border, the maritime border. And it's dealing with fisheries violations and immigration violations. Let's have one agency working in a coherent, I use that terrible phrase, joined up approach with one plan, one strategy and okay. one framework. Let's get Henry, with out. some uh, joined up thinking down there in Kent, thanks very much indeed for your time here on GB News. Thanks Welcome. for joining us.